Hey guys, Chris here with work to game and it is Wednesday, so I do need to put up a Warhammer 40k post, and I am actually going to be unboxing what my brother got me for Christmas. Now this is from my Death Guard list, and it is a tally man. Um, basically, he's an elite choice that allows me to, as long as he's on the table, when I use command points, re-roll them. So pretty handy, nice to have around. Up until now, I had just been proxying him with a... Uh, with, I think, an obliterator, uh, about the same size, and uh, it's time to go ahead and see if we can put this together. And so I've been doing a series of posts on kind of different steps, such as cleaning mold lines and all that, but I wanted to show you guys that this is really simple, especially if you're putting together something that has no components, no options, he just goes together the one and only way. So let's dive in. Now the first step here is obviously just getting him out of his packaging. So, you know, with the plastic like this, a nice, hardy since set of scissors shouldn't be a problem. Uh, I don't plan on saving this packaging for anything, so couldn't be simpler. Now this comes with a series of instructions, but with one guy and one sprue, I don't think we're going to end up needing that, but they are handy when you're wondering what parts. As a matter of fact, a lot of times the sprues have little numbers on them, so if you want to know if something's a cap to one gun or it's a little accent piece to something else, definitely keep an eye on those. Um, it's good to go ahead and look over it, get a feel for it. I like to take it off through and kind of set it on the step of the instructions that it's going with. If it's something larger and more complex, such as, you know, like a big walker or a tank or something like that. And so uh, what I'm going to do is usually you use either a pair of snips or in this case, uh, it's, it's not that complex of a sprue. So I'm just going to use a box cutter here and I'm going to go ahead and get all these parts off. And with a completely clean sprue here, we can pretty much throw this away. Sometimes it's nice to have these little parts to use to either hold, uh, to attach something to if you're painting in sub-assemblies or something like that. And so as you get used to modeling, you may find that you have a use for these, but most of the time they're just going in the trash with the leftover packaging. And as a side note, sometimes it's nice to keep this packaging as an image somewhere if you want to kind of be able to tell exactly what something is. A professional painter has already gone through and done this on this image and so that gives you an idea of kind of where different things are meant to be uh, apart. This is especially common in older sculpts because once it's painted it's easy to sell, tell what is what. In the newer sculpts like this it's actually just pretty crisp but before you kind of want to know where maybe you should be accentuating an edge that isn't horribly clear in the sculpt. Now as I've gone over in a previous post, I do not just glue things straight to my bases, I actually base with cork, so let's go ahead and grab some cork and get that done. And so here's a nice little piece of cork, here's my base, basically I'm going to kind of have a feel for what roughly size this is. When you're just doing one like this, you can actually be kind of picky. Um, and so I will go ahead and break it off, it usually breaks off in a nice clean square like this. And in that square, that's kind of boring. And so I'm actually going to go through and just kind of add some some variety here a lot of times that's just twisting and pulling breaking these corners off uh, making sure that as you break them off sometimes kind of like a twisting motion will actually cause the cork to fray apart in unpredictable ways and so that's actually what you want you want it to kind of look like a rock so I've done this a little bit random here and you'll see that that is gonna give me a nice broad coverage where I'm going to be able to have some of my lava showing, but that I've got a nice horizontal strip right here where I'm going to be able to put his feet because posing them is important. You want to think that through. And the best way to think that through is that you can actually kind of hold the guy up. And so you can kind of get a feel for where his feet are and, and so on. And so actually you'll notice that I did just pull mine off sprue. And so when you pull them off sprue, that's not the time to worry about how close you can get. The sprue is in the way. So I actually, if you can't tell, see I left huge chunks of sprue off. I just took off big chunks to get him nice and loose. So now I can position the knife to get it in there and get exactly right up against it. And at this point, sometimes I will use a much smaller blade. Um, and so let's go ahead and get that done. And so with those done, we now have all of the sprue off, we have a nice clean attempt at this, and this is a snap tight model, so these are really easy to assemble. The advantage of these is that you can see exactly how they're meant together, uh, they're able to place the sprue very conveniently, so there's usually very little cleaning to do, very little you can mess up. The downside is that you have multiple of these in your army, they are going to stand and pose exactly identically. There's very little articulation possible, 
So if you do want to articulate these, what you have to do in in my experience, and there's probably a thousand different ways to do this, is I actually go ahead and put them together very carefully and completely, and then I almost kind of dremel them apart. And uh, because sometimes you have like the front of his shoulder and then the rest of the arm, and so I'll go ahead and put it all together, knowing that I need to get like a nice clean glue along that whole joint without it coming out, so that I can then chop off at the shoulder for the articulation, and this piece will be attached to that. Um, that means that there's going to end up being some green stuff and things like that because even in just the curve of the blade, the thickness of the blade that comes out is going to do damage if you're perfect with that knife. And so you're going to have to prepare to kind of handle that. The nice thing about snap type models is they really require, outside of wanting to adjust them, very little filler or anything like that. They usually are pretty clean. You're not going to get any gapping, um, no matter how, because they go together perfectly. They're designed to fit together one way and one way alone. So let's go ahead and clean the mold lines. And what that is, is that this whole thing on the sprue was cast in one piece of plastic. And so there, there is a line usually all the way around. And the newer ones, sometimes that line goes up and down. They've gotten pretty clever about it. And so you want to get that clean because that will catch paint down the road. So I just take, honestly, a small blade like this, and I kind of hold it right here and, and drag it kind of vertically along the line um, just so that it would like literally like the same way you shave right this isn't gonna cut you it's this motion that cuts but just like a razor as long as it's like this and you're very careful uh, it, it doesn't actually cause really any any damage to the model and so I'm gonna go ahead and make sure that I get all of these nice and clean Okay, and this model was actually extremely clean on all of my mold lines. I got very lucky there, but actually a lot of the sprues fell in a really inconvenient spot. And so the key there was to go in and get the little indention where the sprue comes down to the plastic and meets it. There can leave either a little knob that goes up and the paint will catch that. But if you twist or you pull too much, it can actually leave a divot and that either has to be filled or you're just going to end up with a pockmark somewhere in your model. And so you want to be really careful to get it down to this as close as possible and then actually come across the top and just take that off. And so sometimes that requires a file. This time I was able to get it with a knife, um, but I have a set of kind of like jeweler files and uh, I actually have some like clay sculpting tools. And so sometimes with a larger model where you can have like, you know, like tubes and stuff that are all part of one, one piece, you actually can have to get in there and clean that out. And uh, the smaller the area, the harder it is to get to. The areas to pay most attention to, in my opinion, um, are anything around the head, because faces and bases is where people look, and then the weapon. Uh, weapon barrels can be really bad. Uh, along the tops of the shoulders and the knees are common areas for mold lines, but those are usually pretty easy to clean. Uh, with a larger gun barrel, I would actually go ahead and hollow the barrel out. This is a pretty small pistol, and so I think there is a risk that I would do more damage than good, and it's a plasma pistol, and so there's going to be some accenting along the top, and so there should be plenty there to catch the eye without needing to hollow the barrel out. Um, that's just kind of my impression of it. Uh, I may change my mind when I go to paint, and honestly, today, I, I prefer working in a very, very bright area, but I'm filming, and so I, I do want to be aware that I'm not exactly dealing in the best lighting. So give yourself a nice, clean workspace with lots of light to work with. So let's get some glue, and let's get started. Now, there's a thousand different uh, glue brands out there, but what you're looking for is the active ingredient is cyanoacrylate. Plastic glues work really well. The problem with plastic glues is they're meant to bind plastic to plastic if it's specifically got, like a solvent where it's chemically bonding the plastic. And so that wouldn't work for cork or anywhere there's pewter or anywhere there's green stuff. And so cyanoacrylate works fantastic. There's an accelerator for it, but be really aware. It can fog up easy. It can leave a texture. And so be very careful. Less is more. Um, a couple little spots usually does it instead of one big spot. It's just like paint. If you need to glue one piece and wait a bit, that is okay. So let's go ahead and see if we can get the base glued and then get the guy all glued together with these snap tights. It's usually easy to get most of it in one pass and then we'll give it a second and we'll glue them to the base. Okay, so that guy is now all glued together. It took a little bit to kind of 
hold it there. There were some spots where I had to wait and take, you know, a breathe on it and give it a second. Uh, and actually, it's a good time to mention that sometimes you want to think ahead of how you're going to paint it. And so, you know, especially with your HQ choices where you want to spend a little extra time, when you notice that two pieces are going to go together really close, like say I was going to hold this water bottle like right here, and then there was like badging under here. Well, I can't really get to that badging after this is here, especially if it's like a gun barrel going across. And so you may want to go ahead and actually not put this arm on until after you've painted the badging, leaving a little bit of maybe blue tack or something right here so you get a good clean adhesion to the plastic. So put a tiny little dot of blue tack right here in the shoulder socket, put a tiny bit on the inside of the shoulder that the arm is separate to, attach that to either, you know, a little piece of sprue or a little toothpick or something like that. Paint both completely, pull the blue tack out, now you have two completely clean parts of, of plastic and you can go ahead and put that together at that time. This guy's just an elite choice, I'm not super concerned about it. He's got some small detail in there, but we'll deal with that then. Um, I, I wasn't too worried about it this time, but it's just your call to make and you make it on a by model by model basis. So I'm excited to get this guy on the table, that means we need to go ahead and get him on the base. Now the last piece to go on here was this outside arm that is probably the most fragile piece, so I'm going to be handling him kind of cautious here. Um, if you're really concerned, just give it time. You can always come back and glue this tomorrow. A lot of times I'll just set a timer for myself each day, and then even if I'm not done modeling, I'll go ahead and take a break to avoid kind of burnout. And so you could easily use that as a break point here, and, uh, and no big deal. So it actually looks like he's going to fit on here kind of nicely, but he has this little familiar with him that seems to be carrying scrolls, and so I need to plan out where that guy is going um, because the traditional basing method isn't gonna cut it uh, so he's kind of dragging a scroll here and uh, looks like he's taking a big old step forward so I, I think that I like I ended up shifting this base a little to give myself more lava on one side less on the other I didn't have to pull any additional cork off to do it so I think what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna position this guy right hard to see here but I think I'm gonna position him right there and leave this side out here open for that familiar. And uh, and that should give me a nice composition as I paint this. Uh, we'll see if we can kind of hold that up. So you can see how it shifts him off to the one side, no big deal. And uh, I think that's what we're gonna do. So I'm actually gonna glue the familiar last because he's less important. If he has to shift slightly, no big deal. So let me go ahead and get this glued up and then we will be done. All right, and we are complete. And so he actually has really big feet and he has like a set of books on one side. If I was building most of these, I'd probably actually shave those off because the books make them look repetitive if they all have the same books. And I'd put another little piece of cork there. Um, and that way there would each be unique. Maybe I'd have a guy that was standing on two sets of books because now I have an extra set of books. And uh, that would just be a way that I would convert these because when they do something really unique on a sculpt, that's a beautiful, wonderful thing. But sometimes when it becomes repetitive, that, that actually is an identifying mark and it would be better off without the books. But since Tallyman is unique, that's perfect. I had to shift the uh, familiar a little bit off to this one side. And uh, once I got him positioned just the way I wanted him, you want to think about what he's going to look like on the table. So you want him kind of facing towards the center of the base. So I ended up kind of rotating him slightly. That pushed the familiar here. And that makes me think this familiar may or may not have good contact. So I'm going to let this dry. I'm going to kind of play with it a little as if it had been dropped a few times. Not super rough. And if I'm concerned about it, I'm actually going to pull this familiar off manually. And then I'm going to pin it. And what that means is I'm going to dremel a hole in the bottom of the familiar because he's not got a nice big target, plenty to drill through. And I'm going to drill a hole through my base. And then I'm going to run either a paper clip, a staple, a small piece of wire, whatever you got. Um, and that gives you all that surface area, right? So if you've got this peg, you've got all the surface area on the top piece and you've got all that surface area on the bottom piece. And I would actually pin this familiar for fear that he's going to fall off later. I'm not going to be able to glue him exactly around the paint. And, uh, and it's going to always kind of look like a model that's been repaired. And so better to do all that prep work now. If I have to pull him off, I damage the cork. Just looks like a little rougher cork. So that is it. We have built a tally man. That was not long. The actual recording time of this uh, this video is, uh, we are at 32 minutes right now, start to finish, with me stopping to explain things, me making sure that I'm getting it all right, doing it in the dark, so it's not crazy complicated. And actually, any of the time I spent while this guy was drying, if you can kind of get him to sit where the drying pieces are sitting correctly, you can actually be 
gluing multiple pieces, batching them so you can be making a whole squad of guys easily in under an hour, and taking the time to clean mold lines, taking the time to look at pinning, positioning, possible customization to your basing. So this is not a huge time investment considering how long I will own this guy, and, and the fact that I will use him in a significant number of Death Guard lists because command points are amazing. So definitely let me know in the comments below if you guys have any questions. I'll put links to if you guys have you know, a, a Flickr account, image, Tumblr, wh wherever you guys are sharing images, a blog. I would love to see what models you guys are working on right now. This has been Chris with work to game I hope you guys are having a fantastic week, and uh, hopefully next Wednesday I will be far enough along my Forge Fiend Mollerfiend to be sharing that. Um, if not, I have plenty of projects going on right now, as I'm sure many of you do. So we'll definitely be trying to talk about this, hopefully once a week. That's the target for Warhammer here on work to game uh, Thank you guys so much. Take care, and I'll see you next time. Hey, it's me. I'm in Chris's office. He doesn't know it, but we've got other videos for you to check out right here. And we've got the vlog down there in the corner. Plus, we've got some contact information, and you can totally subscribe to the channel that way as well. So we hope you do. We hope to see you in our next video. But until then, take care.